<laughs> All right, awesome. Um, okay, so I'll go through my presentation because we need a structure, but you know, it's a, it's a small group, pretty laid back. So I'd like you to um, feel comfortable asking questions anytime. So you can just like raise your hand, you know, just like we all learned at school, uh, but we don't have to wait uh, at the end of the presentation to uh, ask questions. So um, yeah, don't go ahead. All right. So we broke the ice. I know you a little bit more, but you don't know me. It's only my second time ever in Vancouver. So I have, you know, just a little, a few details about me. Um, so yeah, my name is Antoine Bonicalzi. If you want to add me on LinkedIn, that's the full name. <laughs> um, I'm the director of marketing at Cyber Impact. So Cyber Impact it was like, like Eli said, we're an uh, email uh, marketing platform and we have some uh, email automation, obviously, features. Uh, we're based in Montreal, so we're, you know, all Canadian and we use like Canadian servers and we send out the email, you know, from, from Canada. Uh, so that's more and more important. That's why we have more and more users throughout the country. And uh, we decided that our market was Canada. So... That's, that's why we, we focus on that, and uh, that's why we have many features uh, that will help you comply with Castle and all of these things. Um, so yeah, and we have a lot of uh, nonprofits that use us, some government agencies, uh, association, and uh, a lot of small businesses uh, as well. Um, and that's a little part of the, uh, some members of, uh, of the team that wanted to say hi, so cheers. Another thing about me is I'm an outdoor sports enthusiast. Uh, so that's um, in uh, Nevada uh, at uh, Red Rock Canyon. So I really like hiking and uh, climbing. Uh, that's why I really like coming here. And I, I'm excited uh, because I think I'm at, I'm at, uh, I might catch a sunny day. So uh, Saturday, it's supposed to be sunny. Uh, and I'll go uh, in Squamish, rock climbing, and hike up the chief. Uh, so very excited about that. Also. I'm proud to be a French Canadian, uh, so you've already noticed my accent, so I'm working on it. Uh, it's a work in progress. Uh, I like to say that I'm a, a Frenchie in transition because I married an Anglophone and she's slowly turning me into one. Uh, but obviously, as you can hear, the process is not completed yet. I'm a Habs fan, and when I come to Vancouver, I like to say that we're all amongst friends because my beef is with the maple leaf. not. <laughs> And, and not, not the Canucks, so, the, so we're all good. And obviously, I love poutine. <laughs> um, all right, what is marketing automation? So I wanna make sure that we're all on the same page. Um, we're, so, so marketing or email automation. So uh, basically, the word automation means that stuff is happening on autopilot without continuous input from the operator. The operator is you, the marketer or you know, the person that works at uh, communication. So we set up what's called a workflow. And then once we put that workflow live, um, the, the emails, the actions, but mostly emails, are sent out automatically. Okay, so I'll talk about workflows. Sometimes you'll hear me say uh, a scenario. So uh, just in Cyber Impact, we call them scenarios, but basically it's a workflow. And uh, a workflow will have a trigger, something that happens. The most common trigger is someone fills out a form, let's say. And then we have actions. Uh, and actions, more, more often than not, the action will be sending out an, an email or sending out the sequence of, uh, of emails. Um, Email marketing, our, our email automation is great uh, because think of it as a way for you because you have limited resources. Think of it as a way to uh, communicate better with your audience and communicate more often. Okay, S Most small businesses and small organizations, we do not communicate uh, often enough with our, our audience. It can be you know, your clients, your members, uh, your prospect, your donors, uh, whatever the case might be. Um, we all receive a lot of emails you know, every day. We're on social media. You know, we get so many communications. Um, it's, it's hard for a small organization to stay top of mind, to stay you know, in, in, in the mind of you know, the, our, our audience. Uh, and if you have an email newsletter, maybe you send it out you know, once a month and sometimes you're too busy, you skip a month. So um, that's not you know, enough nowadays to stay top of mind. So if you spend some time you know, working on your workflows, uh, setting those things up, they, they need work, it's not magic, but once they're up, they're live, um, you will be sending out you know, those, those emails so uh, your audience might hear from you mo more often. 
And you can also make it smart and send the right message at the right time. So you also communicate more effectively, all right? Um, so what, what can you do or, you know, what can be your goals uh, for, you know, not-for-profits organizations? Uh, it can help you develop a loyal, a loyal donor, donor base. It can help you expand your reach. It can, you know, drive more uh, donations or more uh, memberships. Um, so, yeah, we'll talk. And I'll, and I'll I have some very down-to-earth, like, really concrete examples for you. The first automation, you know, the thing that I see the most often uh, with, uh, you know, not-for-profits um, is an automation that will welcome new donors, okay? So I think, that's, I think that's very important if you have donors or, you know, if you have members, you know, maybe just replace the word donor for members. Um, when someone uh, becomes a donor, it's important to, um, you know, communicate uh, as quickly as possible with that with that person. Uh, so many organizations, we we spend a lot of a lot of time and effort uh, finding new donors. Uh, you know, we 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 put up events. Uh, you know, you have fundraisers, stuff like that. But maybe not uh, enough uh, effort is put into um, taking care of the donors that you already have. Uh, in business, we say that it's it's easier uh, to have uh, a repeat customer or, you know, sell again to uh, a customer that you already have than to uh, get a new customer. So I would say it's the same thing, uh, you know, in fundraising and stuff like that. Uh, so you want to take care of them. So let's see an example. All right. Okay, so you could have a trigger. So that's simply someone that is added to a donor list. So maybe in your email marketing platform, email uh, or marketing automation platform, you have a list and that's where you send all of your new donor. Maybe you add them, you know, low tech, you add them manually or maybe they're added automatically with, because of the, the CRM or Salesforce. Someone is, uh, becomes a donor in Salesforce and that information is sent to Cyber Impact or MailChimp or another, uh, another platform. Uh, and then you send a welcome email. So that's very important. The welcome email will say, you know, thank you very much for, be for becoming a donor. Um, and this is, this is how you make a difference, okay? So in those emails, you wanna make sure that people understand um, how you use their money. You know, what difference in the world they are making by uh, being a donor with your uh, organization. Um, so right away, you send a welcome email. Uh, I was talking yesterday to, you know, more of a business crowd, but I was telling them that welcome emails are responsible for 300% uh, more revenue than any other type of uh, promotional emails. Uh, why? Because, you know, someone just became a client, someone just subscribed, someone just became a donor. So they interacted with your brand or with your organization um, very, uh, well, they just interacted with your brand. They just decided to uh, take that action. So you are fresh in their mind. Now, if they go to their email inbox and they see the same name, your organization's name, they are more likely to open that email to read the content that's there. And if you want them to do something like subscribe to something or, or you know, attend an event, if you have a call to action in your welcome email, um, you will have a lot of success with that. So just know that the welcome email, the first email that you send when someone becomes a subscriber or becomes a donor is the one that will get, get the most click uh, and uh, yeah, the, the most opens and the most, the most clicks. So invest in them, they're very important. And What's cool about uh, email automation or marketing automation is that you can start very, very small, okay? Start very small. The first step can be uh, putting up that uh, welcome email. And then when you have more time, you have more content, you have more emails, you know, you have ideas, you want to continue that sequence, you can just add to an ongoing sequence. So that's what I would do if you don't do any automation right now. I would um, consider what are the most important um, you know, action that people can take. Uh, they, they subscribe to something or they become a donor. I would put up a welcome email uh, and then down the road, I would continuously, maybe once a week or once a month, try to come up with a new email and add an email to that sequence. So uh, for a new donor sequence, then you send a welcome email, you can add a delay, let's say like a seven days delay or a one month delay. 
and then you're sending another email about other um, other examples of the, the the differences that you know uh, the donation make. Try to really focus on that. And what you want to do, you could have like a down the road, you could have like a 12 step, um, a 12 email sequence that uh, emails are sent out, you know, once a month. And for the first year, when someone becomes a donor, for the first year, they receive those emails. So they don't just receive your quarterly or monthly newsletter. They have like an onboarding sequence. Uh, so I think that you could um, achieve a goal of, of having your donor stay longer with you and being more loyal uh, with a sequence like that. So I have a, a fictitious example. So let's say that I have um, an organization that is called Save a Pup. Uh, that would be um, a welcome email that I would send. You know, very simple, cute image, you know, white background, very, very min minimalistic. Uh, someone was asking yesterday also, should we, you know, uh, include a lot of uh, images and, and videos and, and graphics in our emails? Um, yes, but not too much. Okay, so some email clients, some people will receive your emails and the uh, images will not load automatically. So your emails need to make sense without the images and the images that you add, uh, if the person sees them, will just, you know, um, have more impact. Will just embellish your, uh, your, um, your email. So something like that, every month your donation will save five pops in need. So it's really about the difference that I make as, as a donor, as a member. All right, another one that you can do is make sure that you invest uh, efforts into nurturing subscribers or event attendees and try to turn them into donors or, or, or members or stuff like that. Um, so you probably have a website and on your website, you may have a little form that says, you know, uh, let's keep in touch, uh, subscribe to our newsletter. Um, that's great, but what happens when someone subscribes? Um, they're added to your list, and like I said, maybe in a month, they'll receive something. Uh, maybe in three months, they'll, rece they'll receive something. Um, so, uh, like I said, if you have uh, a sequence, like a welcome email, and then uh, other follow-ups that are happening automatically, um, you'll, stay, you'll, you'll keep them more engaged, and you have more chances of turning those leads uh, into donors, okay? Um, yeah, and it could be also event attendees. So what do you do with people who, at, who attend your, uh, your events? Um, you can ask me questions about, you know, Canada's anti-spam law, but quickly I can tell you that someone who attends an event well, you could, you could ask them, you know, you could add a field, would you like to receive our emails? If they say yes, or they check that box, then they have what, what's called um, an express consent. So an express consent is always valid unless they unsubscribe. But even if you don't ask for permission, uh, these guys attended an event, so they're interested in your topic. You could say that they have an implied consent of uh, six months. So. Even if you don't ask for permission, you could all add all of them to your uh, email marketing platform and you could set up like a, a six month uh, email sequence to try to follow up with them. Um, obviously, if they unsubscribe, you have to stop emailing them. Um, and after the six months, if they never uh, confirmed their uh, consent, you need to stop emailing them. But that would be, that would be like totally okay uh, in terms of the law. And I think in terms of ethics, it's also fine. I mean, I'm interested. Um, I attend this event, and you send me follow-up emails, yeah. as, as long as it's relevant. Is that the same time frame for the US? Six months so all of these things are changing quickly, but in the US right now, you don't have that distinction. So in the US, you could email me forever, as long as I don't unsubscribe. Uh, in the US, they don't have like, um, they have like an unsubscribe base law. So you can add me, you can start emailing me, as long as, it, uh, as if I unsubscribe, you stop. So um, you have like an implied consent vis-a-vis um, -vis everyone. Um, but in Canada, you have, you, you gotta have consent. But the tricky thing is that, you know, people think that consent means um, express consent. I gave you my consent. We can have implied consent if we have a relationship. Um, like asking for a quote or, you know, 
um, attend an event, being a customer or being a member. Um, being a member or being a customer or being a donor, you would have an implied consent that is valid as long as this rela relationship um, is, is going on. And even after the, rela the relationship ends, you still have 24 months. You still have two months. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's interesting to know. But um, so, yeah. So what that could look like, uh, the trigger could be someone is added to a subscriber list or an attendee list. Let's say that it's a, a subscriber list. So someone, you know, fills out a form on your website to start receiving your emails and your updates. Um, you could, if it's relevant, it could be just one form, but if it's relevant and you have different topics, you can add, uh, you could add a, a, a field in there. Like, let's say I don't only save pups, I only, I also, um, save kittens. Uh, I could ask people if they're more of a dog person or a cat person, just with uh, a field, a field in the form. And then I could send those people to different lists. And then I could, I could f send follow up, uh, you know, content that is more for, you know, dog person or cat person. So it, you make it more relevant this way. But you can start really simple. Someone fills out a form on your website, you add them to a subscriber list. And uh, then you send them, send them uh, a first um, info about their interest email. So follow up information about their interest. So note that these emails are different. They're not for donors. So they're not really talking about you so much. They're giving you know, information and relevant content. They can be blog articles. Think of this sequence as a way to uh, share your most popular blog content that you ever put out. Um, those guys are, are more like leads and less customers. <laughs> um, and then you can have a delay, let's say 30 days, and then you send them another email and you could, with time, no pressure, but with time, have something that is, is set up for 12 months, 24 months, whatever. Um, so yes, you will send your newsletters, your newsletter to these people. A newsletter is, let's say, um, you know, information that is time sensitive. So the events that are coming up, the new blog articles, uh, you know, big milestone, you know, you're, you're, you, you, you promote your best work. But in these um, automated emails, you need to uh, insert content that is evergreen. So that can be post uh, past articles that are still like always relevant. And then you can share your uh, most popular content that way. Because if you think of it, if someone um, subscribe to your newsletter tomorrow, they will receive your upcoming content, but they will probably never read your past content. And some of those articles can be, you know, super relevant to them. So <clears throat> marketing automation or email automation can be a way for you to share all of the past content that is relevant for a new subscriber. Uh, and then people can, at least you make sure that people will hear from you, let's say every month, even if you skip the newsletter completely. Well, those new subscrib subscribers will. Um, another tactic to make it more intelligent, let's say, smart, you take what you think is good and you leave the rest, but um, maybe what I would do is I would put, the, put together the sequence that, that's on top, but let's say that someone clicks on the link to go read the full article and go back to my website, that can become a trigger to send them another email. And that email, because I know that person is interested um, because they clicked and they, they, they went to my website, um, that can be an email that, is, that asks them to become a donor. Okay, so that's how you can, not only will you stay top of mind and send you know, good information, you can also have a rule that you have like a, a more salesly um, or more call to action oriented email that is ready to be sent. And when someone uh, is identified as someone who is really interested, then you, you push that email also. Okay. And you can wait. You know, you, we, we talk about lead scoring. Um, Cyber Impact will do that a little bit. You know, things like Salesforce that are uh, much more, um, uh, much more, uh, advance uh, for those type of things because it's a CRM, um, then you can, you can make a rule that if someone clicks or goes back to your website 
three times in a month, then that will be a trigger to send to send an invitation to become a donor or an invitation to uh, to an event, something like that. So that's an, another example from Save a Pup. Um, it's harsh a little bit, but it's the reality. Um, so that would be like, again, a simple email that I would send to my subscribers that uh, are interested in, you know, dogs and, and, and dogs well-being. So you send them uh, an article that talks about an issue and when people click on read now, they go back to your website, okay? And so you could have, like I said, a rule that says if you click on this and you stay on my website long enough, I send you another email that asks you to do something. Another thing that we can do with um, uh, marketing automation and email automation is engage with lapsed members or donors. So obviously, um, you want them back, <laughs> uh, so let them know. Um, so we'll look at a potential uh, workflow uh, for those uh, membership in the past three months who have expired. And, and by the way, that for me, my, um, what I see that really works uh, for these type of things and uh, start with the assumption that they just forgot. They just forgot to renew. So that's always like a good place to start. Not like, you know, why did you leave? But we know you're busy. It probably have just slipped your mind. If you want to renew, you know, click here. And um, So the trigger, the mem membership expired or the membership is about to expire. You send a message like, hey, don't miss out. You may have forgotten to renew. And obviously, you also have to always uh, repeat um, what's the impact that being a member or, or being a donor uh, really makes. Okay, So it's, it's all about that. Uh, and then you could have like something like a seven-day seven uh, delay. Um, you send another email. Here's why your membership matters. You wait again. Uh, you send more relevant content. You wait again. And then, you know, you gave them many points of contact. In, in all of those emails, it's important to have a call to action. Like if people, you know, want to um, renew, obviously they need to, to be able to, to do so. Um, and then at the end, you can decide what, you, what you're going to do. Is it going to be a phone call? Is it going to be a survey? Nothing. If you do nothing right now and you just add um, a workflow like this, well, I'm certain that some people will renew just because you know you send them many email reminders and not just reminders but good content along the way you re remind them why it's important um, and uh, if you do want to call or, or you know send a sur send a survey could be uh, automatic also so you send a survey to know why they decided not to renew and obviously you put an option to renew in that email also because maybe they miss all of those emails and it's going to be like the fifth one or the sixth one uh, that, that gets to them. Um, but yeah, if you decide to email them manually or to give them a call, there will be less of them at the end of the workflow uh, than at the beginning. So that, that will be the goal. All right, so I want to talk to you about the types of emails that you could automate. So I'm going to uh, show you examples of emails from really well-known uh, nonprofits and, and charities and, all, and th things like that. So very classic emails uh, that we see uh, often in, in, in this industry or in this field. But I want to think about them in terms of how you can automate them, okay? Um, So an event invitation. Obviously, an event, most events have, uh, you know, a day and a date. So it would be difficult to automate uh, an email or an event uh, invitation that will always be relevant. You can add it to a sequence, but once the event is passed, you know, usually it's, it's not relevant anymore. Uh, but maybe you do have um, recurring events. Um, like for, for example, us, we do it uh, for webinars. So we have recurring webinars every week. I give a webinar for uh, new users. So that event invitation is all on autopilot, okay? So it's part of our like onboarding uh, sequence. We invite people to um, an evergreen event that takes place uh, every, every week. 
So if you have that, then that's great and uh, it works really well. Newsletters, so that these types of emails. Um, usually newsletters are, you know, is content that is timely. So like I said, uh, news in your company, uh, big achievements, uh, you know, milestones, uh, blog articles, things like that. Um, but as we discussed earlier, you can find your most popular blog content that's always relevant and place them in a newsletter style email but that you can automate throughout, let's say, uh, a long sequence of a, of a year or something like that. Donation appeals, how you can automate those? Well, when, when we saw in the graph, um, you know, you send the, the content and when someone is interested or clicks or something like that, visits a, visit a, a URL, then you can send, uh, yeah, an email automatically, trigger an email automatically that asks them for, for something, for their help. And obviously, thank you emails. Um, if you re remember one thing and you decide to invest more time in your thank you emails, uh, that will be a big win uh, for tonight because I think they can be very effective. And obviously, retention emails, uh, like we've just uh, discussed, once the, a membership or a, a donorship expires, well, you can send, you know, emails like that. Are you taking pictures of me? Oh. <laughs> All right, I made a last minute addition to um, this presentation just because uh, yesterday I was talking to a, 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 at another event. Uh, it was an event called uh, the Video Marketing Conference and I gave a talk about how you can use video and email together. And uh, I think it's relevant for you guys too because what we discussed uh, yesterday is that um, basically video is your, your audience's preferred uh, contact format, okay? So um, there's a crazy stat that, that states that by 2020, and that's like in a year, 80% um, of internet traffic will be for, uh, you know, towards video. So it's, it's huge. Um, your audience, you know, doesn't really read <laughs> most of them. They don't like to read or if they're given the option between watching a video and reading something, most people will opt for, you know, watching a video. And, um, but again, that being said, video being the preferred format, I think email is still going strong and email is most of, is probably the most effective channel, you know, to send that, uh, that information. Um, so how can you include video in your emails? Um, well, we went around the room and, you know, people, you know, almost everyone sends email and some people do automation, but who here um, does video in their organization, part of their communication or marketing? Good, 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 good. So all of the others, you have to start. <laughs> but anyway, I'll, I'll show you like a few slides or a few ideas of how you can include uh, video in your emails. And you'll see why it's in, it's in quote, quotation marks. But wait, but why? Why would you do that in your emails? Uh, including video in an email can lead to open rate increases of you know 19% and a click-through rate increase upwards of 50%. That's from our friends at uh, Campaign Monitor. So if people understand that there will be a video, they're more likely to click, to open the email, and they're really more likely to click a link and go back to a website or go back to um, uh, where, wherever you want to send them to watch the video. There's one option with today's technology is uh, embedded your uh, videos directly in an email. Okay, with the use of HTML5. Um, I think it's something that is worth uh, testing. It's probably worth, um, uh, you know, trying, trying it out. Um, the thing is that if, you, if, if the important thing for you is to have a view, so you want uh, to optimize for views, you want as many people as possible to watch the video. If people don't have to leave their email client to watch the video, then a lot of people will, will, will do that. Uh, obviously, if you're concerned about conversion, as we say in marketing, so if you want 
people to be able to do something after watching the video, it makes more sense to send them away from the email client and back to uh, a page on your website where the video is embedded or like a landing page or something like that. Um, but if you want views, it makes sense to embed the video uh, directly in your emails. But there's a big, big but. Uh, not all email clients will support HTML5. So a lot, a big portion of your audience will not be able to play the video. So that's why we have to think about fallback. So technically, if the video does not play, um, it needs to display uh, an image or, or a GIF uh, in, in its place. And then the image will, needs to be clickable and you know, I need to be sent to um, YouTube or Wistia or a page on your website where I can watch the video. So hopefully more and more email clients will support this. I think it's, you know, it, has, it has some merit. Um, but uh, yeah, we need to technically be able to um, plan for fallbacks. So I know it's small. I don't necessarily want you to you know, see the details. But basically out of, what, 25 email clients, popular email clients, one, two, three, four, five of them only will support HTML5. So all of the others need to also you know see something that is relevant and uh by the way um i really like wistia wistia is um, an email uh, hosting platform and they make it very easy to use this technology they will you upload your video they will provide a code and uh, if the email client of your you know subscriber uh, supports html5 it will play and if not it will automatically show uh, a still image of your video instead so you know it takes care of the technical uh, details for you. I'm not paid by Wistia, but I really like their, their service. I think they're very cool. Is that the only way to do that? Or is there another platform for the um, I don't know about the email platform that will make it automatically. I, I don't know of, of any. Um, I think it's more, because I mean, it's in, it's, it will be in HTML uh, code at the end of the day. Uh, so you can insert it like in Cyber Impact or, or MailChimp, no problem. Um, and, you know, if you have like, if you are a programmer at your, um, your agency, can take care of the fallback code. Like it doesn't have to be from Wistia, but, you know, for one man team, you know, that's not super technical. Uh, just, you know, generate the code and it will take care of the fallback. So, um, yeah. <laughs> no, it's okay. No, it's a great question. Um, the other, um, you know, option, and it's very simple, but it still works very, very well, is simply using an image with a link. So again, nice little um, uh, email. We have a big, obvious uh, image, and uh, the image is like um, a thumbnail of the video. So a few, uh, a few tricks to make it very uh, effective and obvious that there's a video. Have a thumbnail of the video with a play button, even if even if it's a fake click uh, play button, it still you know uh, makes you understand that it's a video. Have as much as possible only one call to action. So if you send an email about a video, and the only button, the only call to action is click to watch a video, more people will do it. Uh, make sure that that people understand that there's a video and uh, mention uh, a video in the subject line in the preview text and uh, all of that. Um, and also, s uh, smiling faces, they, they really help. So, uh, so, yeah. Another option that I really like to include a video in your email without actually including a video in your email is replacing the still image with uh, a GIF. And um, I, I, s I surveyed the attendees yesterday. I said, do you say GIF or GIF? <laughs> Who says GIF? We still love you. It's okay. <laughs> no, one or the other. It doesn't matter. But for me, it's like a, it's like a gift. You know, I, I want to receive a gift. Um, but yeah, what it does, it, it, it will add motion to your email. It will really stand out. And what's cool about a, a GIF, uh, even if it's like, you know, 15 seconds, whatever, five seconds in that case, uh, not even, it, it will still give like a preview or a taste of the video. So you, you understand the look and feel uh, of the video. Um, so here, you know, that's a great example from Airbnb. So you know that the video will be like inspiring, you know, like about 
traveling and, and experience and, and family and all that. And, you know, the little, little girl is cute. So you want to click to watch the whole thing. Uh, so I think that's a cool, a cool way to, uh, to do it. Um, yeah. Short. Um, the important thing is the size of the file. So the rule of thumb is uh, not more than 125K. Um, so yeah, so it won't be long for sure. It will be like a few seconds. Uh, but still, you know, it's, it, 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 there's motion. It's animated. And um, it has to be like a preview of the video, really. Yeah. I had another example. Where is it? Oh, no. It disappeared. It's okay. Uh, the video embedded or like between a, a GIF and an image? Yeah. No, I haven't. It's a, it's a great, it's a great question. I, I would, I would do it. You know, you can just set up an AB test for your own audience. See what works best. A still video versus uh, a GIF. But, uh, maybe it depends also on the nature of the video. If it's something that is really, f um, uh, visually, uh, appeasing, um, or like stunning, maybe a GIF is good, you know? Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a great question, but I don't have the stats. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'll, I'll take questions. Um, so if I, I would say it's your turn now, you know, work on your automations, hopefully give you a few ideas, things to uh, implement in your company. And if it's only starting with like, like I said, the trigger in one email, start with that. And then you can add to it, uh, when you do have time. Uh, make sure that eventually you have time <laughs> or you make time. Um, at Cyber Impact, we're also proud of, uh, you know, working with a lot of amazing organizations. We have, like I said, more and more uh, Canadian-based, uh, you know, nonprofits. So uh, that's why we're really happy to, to be here and, and, like, try to do our part. Um, so, yeah, there you go. Got questions? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> um, most triggers will work. Most of like the basic triggers will work. Like let's say if the trigger is um, someone filling out a form, you know, that will work because the, the fact of filling out a form adds them to the email marketing platform. So it's not dependent on cookies. It's just about the information that they gave. Um, also any automation that has to do with someone opening an email, it's also not dependent on, on, on cookies uh, because it's the email marketing platform that knows that an email has been opened. And uh, clicking, clicking on a link, the fact of clicking on a link in an email uh, will also work. If, if the trigger is visiting a page or like how long they stay on, on a page on your website, that won't work. But like the simple like low tech fact of just clicking a, a, a link, uh, a button, something like that in an email will still work. Yeah. So you, you can go a long way with just like those basic things. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. So there, there are many, but, um, I work for cyber impact. So you can go to cyberimpact.com. You can create a free account. You can try it out. Um, and, uh, and yeah, but there are, there are many, many, um, Actually, there are like two industries and in like marketing, marketing automation um, is like a, in the middle of, of, of both. There's all the email marketing platform. So like Cyber Impact, people would use that to, you know, send a newsletter and stuff like that. Uh, like MailChimp is there, Constant Contact, a lot of our American competitors. Um, and then there's all of the CRM. So like more like Salesforce and, and things like that, that will also do some of that. Um, so somewhere in the middle, you know. Uh, but yeah, email marketing platform will, will do uh, everything that we just discussed uh, today, yeah. Yeah, we don't do it for now. Uh, it's something that we want to, uh, to add to our, our features to have our, our own tracker. Uh, but yeah, for now, no. So the, all of the triggers that I talked about, um, 
those those will be the one that we will uh, uh, focus on. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, well, that's, that's a great question. Um, I have some opinions based on, you know, experience and all that um, and just common sense. But at the same time, like the, the best answer to give you is to try to test it out. Um, you know, like we have like, uh, um, you know, you can just like try to uh, plan um, some, uh, some emails at different, different days and different, different times. Uh, there's always just like A-B testing also that works really well for that. So you can look at your stats and even like um, the platform will automatically, um, like we will send a sample size, watch the results and uh, automatically send the bulk of your emails at the right time. Uh, we're working on that with um, uh, uh, AI, artificial intelligence. Um, but okay, so usually the, the answer that I, I, I say is in B2B, so business to business, if you communicate with you know people at work uh, during the week is better for sure like for us it's during the week and uh, the best days are um, from Tuesday to uh, Thursday um, Mondays are usually very busy for people and Friday a lot of people are already like you know in weekend mode so Tuesday Wednesday and uh, Thursday is better uh, then you have to test it out I usually send out my emails in the morning but sometimes for certain type of things uh, during lunchtime is, is also very good. Uh, and sometimes even in the afternoon. Um, when I used to work at an agency also, and we had a lot of uh, retail customers, then we, after testing a lot, we ended up sending um, emails uh, for certain retailers uh, Saturday morning because people would shop a lot in the weekend and uh, you send your promotions and your specials uh, you know, Saturday morning early. People get those, yeah. Um, yeah. So it really depends uh, the the type of content and who you're trying to target and in what in what context. Yeah. Yes. Cool. Yeah. I would try to manage that in putting them in different lists, uh, or like automatically segment based on uh, on time zones. Um, so that's, that's an information that you can maybe have from your CRM or, you know, however you can send that information to the email marketing platform. That could be a field. Uh, and then you have different lists and, um, you just make sure to plan, uh, those emails. Uh, and you, you, that can be the only difference, but maybe it's also relevant to change, you know, modify other, like the content or the subject line or something like that. Uh, so you can personalize even more than that. But if you just want to do that, I, there's certainly a way to uh, segment those those people. Um, yeah, put them in different lists. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, I have a deep terror whenever I set up something automatic that it will start doing things that I don't know about. Um, okay. <laughs> you know, really? <laughs> Yeah. Once a week, forever until my dying day. What are some of the tips about just how you keep this from turning into an out of control monster? <laughs> um, well, first tip is um, start slow, like start small, and uh, increase the uh, the complexity. Um, don't try to have too many workflows uh, targeting the same people. Um, so that's, that's when, like, if you have two workflows that don't have necessarily the same triggers, the same conditions, uh, but you know, um, they can be towards the same people that that's when I can receive multiple messages. So you want to, you know, keep things simple, um, have longer workflows instead of, let's say if you can have like one long workflow instead of having two separate small workflows. If it makes sense to continue the same one, so you can have uh, conditions. And uh, let's say in Cyber Impact, you can. We ask you if you want to allow people to uh, go through the scenario twice, or you know, or just once. So you can have a rule that says no, that person will only be able to go through that workflow once. So if it's only one workflow instead of like multiple workflow, you know, that's 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 a, a best practice uh, right there. Um, and then you have to make sure that you have conditions that the workflow will stop 
are an action, like if someone does something, you send them to another group and that group is excluded from that workflow. Just make sure that uh, you, know, you can um, see them as different columns. And when something happens, like becoming a donor or something, uh, make sure that they are sent to another column. Yeah. Um, it also helps to have uh, an email provider that takes care of duplicates. Um, what I don't like about some of our competitors is let's say someone is um, in two lists or is in multiple lists and you send out an email to all of those lists, uh, people will receive like duplicates. They will receive the email like two, three, four times. Uh, with Cyber Impact, we take care of all the duplicates. So uh, even if I send an email or an automated email and I want to send it to uh, many lists, if you if you're a member of all of those lists, you'll receive the email only once. So that, that makes a difference also. Yeah. Yeah, implied consent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you said it. You knew it. Yeah, so it's implied or express. Um, is it express? Yeah, 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 express consent. Yeah, I would, I would, I would say so, um, because like those people are users and, uh, yeah, for like, like for us, like we're in like an online platform and everyone who's a user, everyone who signs up for, uh, be a member and, you know, use the, the platform. We have an implied consent with them for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it's a little complicated. By the way, the government is supposed to clarify all of that. We're waiting on this. We're probably going to wait for long, you know, because <laughs> it's the government. Um, uh, but yeah, we, we, we basically, our opinion was that we need to be more clear on that because it's basically all gray areas. Um, but a few examples. So um, if I'm a customer, and uh, I stopped being a customer. At the time of the last transaction, the implied consent would continue for two years, 24 months. Um, if I'm only like, uh, I requested information, I submitted, I submitted a form asking for more details about something. Um, I'm only like a prospect or something, you know, I'm just interested. Um, you would have six months to, uh, to have an implied consent. And, and those are the on only two uh, time frames. So it's, uh, it's either like 24 months or six months. Yeah. Um, well, if you go on our website, cyberimpact.com, there's a, a castle link. And uh, from there, you could download. We have an infographic. So you could download that, print it out, and you know, keep it. So we try to make it. Um, user-friendly as much as possible. And in Cyber Impact also, the, when you import your customer or your contacts, you can tell the system what type of relationship you have with those people and will automatically um, tag them with the right consent and will tell you uh, before the consent expires. So that's, you know, little things that we have to make it easier to comply with Castle. Because, so, yeah, it is kind of a mess. You know? <laughs> But at the same time, I want you to, if, if you try to play by the rules, um, really you would have to do something very bad for you to happen, to, for, for something to happen. Because um, only the CRTC can give out fines and they will only inquire if a lot of people complain about you. So just if you don't spam people, it should be fine. <laughs> But I will. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I can do that.
It's holding the mic. I'm going to be your mic yeah. man. Watch okay. this. <laughs> All right. Let me get on the interwebs. So I log into an account that has some automation, not my main account. But we have some very simple sequences. Whoa, no. Exactly. The curse of the live demo. This is why I did apologize up front. No, no, no. I remember. I changed my password. <laughs> Think that no, sorry guys. No worries, no worries. So uh, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know what you were do that. <laughs> exactly. That was an act of cruelty. It you was know, to be your for the rest of you who are event hosts, let you never do this to your poor guest presenter. Never put them on the spot like this because, of course, the passwords are going to be a little bit wonky when when you have like people. For testing, I have like a dozen accounts. Exactly as well. You should. What are the kinds of triggers? Oh, because. Oh, because you must have multiple screens on the go, perhaps? Well, you know, we don't need to fight this indefinitely. At some point, as I said, act of cruelty. Um, but what I really want to get a sense of is like, what are the kinds of triggers I can play with? So, uh, so there's obviously like, Someone clicked, someone opened. Um, what are the other know. triggers? So someone completes a form, like, what are the, the kinds of things we can play with? Okay, marketing automation. Uh, so if I want to create a new scenario or a workflow, I would go there. And uh, what we did is we have scenario templates also. So you could start with um, something that is pre-built. The internet is not great. Ah. This is not working. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Oh, okay. Maybe, maybe we are going to at some point say, like, I've gone too far. So like, you know. So, uh, but I but think that was really good. Um, Sorry, guys. No worries. No worries. Anyone else have any final questions before we wrap today? So we have an API, so a lot of our, yeah, okay. sorry. No, once your arms <laughs> uh, We have an API, so a lot of our users will connect with, you know, other software through the API. Um, and we also have, a, like, a, Z a Zapier integration. So if you know Zapier, it's a connector that connects, you know, a lot of web services. Um, so if you have, like, a well-known CRM or something like that, like Salesforce or HubSpot, or I know they do email, but if you wanted to uh, use Cyber Impact as well, you can connect those through uh, Zapier. Yeah. I'm curious as to why that doesn't work, though. But whatever. Sorry? Yeah, well. All right, I, don't, I won't force it. <laughs> That varies a lot. It really, really varies a lot. It depends on the industry. It depends on the, the content. It depends on like the relationship you have with your customers. It depends on the list, or I say customers, but you know, contacts. Um, if you import the list and you know they haven't heard from you in like a year, like it will be it will be low. Uh, but you know, for uh, a lot of our users, um, it will be like between between ten and fifty. Like when I send email, like I have let's say. 15,000 15, subscribers, and I don't send the same thing to everyone, but once in a while, you know, I have like an announcement or something that I need to send out to all of my uh, my contacts. 
I probably get like a 30%, 35, sometimes 40. Uh, for smaller lists, um, some of our users have like upwards to 50%. Yeah. It also depends on the subject line and lots of things like that. But yeah. With our RSS feeds? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's possible with RSS feeds, yes. Yeah, I would have to confirm with my, my colleagues, but I think we have customers who do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I don't do it personally because I want to have control of the formatting and uh, I don't necessarily want the subject line to be automatically the blog post or things like that, but yes, if you if you wanted to automate it, I think it's possible. Yeah. Yeah, I did that for a couple months for let's for Vancouver, and uh, I went from like oh everyone's like you know thirty five percent of people are opening down to eight percent real fast just because yeah. I think what works as blog content and what works as email content work pretty different. So at least in a pretty rough way I set it up, it did work well for me. But I think there's a colleague of mine who does a much better version of it, which seems to perform a bit better, but I, I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, I think it depends on the expectation of what people expect from the email. You know, if they expect that it's a delivery for yeah. a Yeah, if, y I think you're absolutely right. If the expectation was I subscribe to the blog yeah. updates, then that's that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, th I know I know HubSpot does that too. Like you, people just like just subscribe to the blog, and then automatically all of the articles will be sent out. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys. Thanks for coming. Cyberimpact.com. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for coming here and uh, and sharing your wisdom. And yeah, flowcharts, always love flowcharts. So the final thing we do before I send you off to the pub with us is uh, we're going to do a little bit of just a show and tell community announcements board kind of thing. So if you've got some interesting news, maybe you are looking to hire someone, maybe you're looking for a new job, maybe you have a gala and you're trying to sell tickets right now, maybe you just want to show off because you finally launched your new website. Oh, hooray. Um, this is your chance to come. And, uh, and yeah, tell people all about it. So uh, here's the model. I'll just do it for you, and then you can dive right in. So it's going to go like this. You're going to start off with your name, and then you're going to have up to 60 seconds, and I'll be the jerk with the clock holding you to account. So it's going to go like this. Hi there. My name's Eli Vandergeesen. I'm here with NetSquid Vancouver. And if you are involved around the general nonprofit sector and want to learn more about tech and digital marketing, We've got these amazing free events held every month. Please go to meetup.com, look for NetSquid Vancouver. It'll blow your mind. Why not? Hi, um, I, I'm Renee. Uh, sorry, I sort of jumped in because I didn't actually listen to this talk, but I heard you guys <laughs> doing announcement. So thank you very much for letting me crash your your thing. Um, uh, so I'm Renee from uh, Peace Geeks. Um, we are a nonprofit organization here in Vancouver, and we do technology for peace. Um, we work on two projects. Um, one is here locally in Vancouver. That's an app for newcomers to Canada to settle uh, successfully in their new homes, and we're about to launch that in the new year. And we're starting on a new mentorship app for newcomers as well. Um, and we also have work um, uh, in the Middle East, uh, working on um, hate and extremism in digital spaces. And uh, we are hiring right now for five roles so uh, we've got a fundraising uh, position open strategy a communications assistant position an outreach coordinator position and two developer roles so I just wanted to share that news <laughs>
<laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. Fabulous. Oh. I'm in the back if anybody actually wants to. Awesome. Yeah. If you need a connection, I'm happy to make that connection happen. Uh, yeah, I'm Joel Harrison. Um, I previously mentioned agency uh, methodic content, uh, content marketing for nonprofits, uh, but I actually just launched a new project called ElevateHub.ca. Um, and what Elevate Hub is, is uh, a Vancouver social impact hub. So a digital place where people can go to find the news, um, find articles, find interviews, and find event listings for everything that's happening in Vancouver and the Lower Mainland uh, around social impact and nonprofits. So uh, really coming into this based on, you know, trying to find this research when I was building, uh, working on building my relationships and network uh, in the city and finding there wasn't really anything out there. Um, so I started building it and, um, looking for, you know, if people have events, um, tell me about it um, and we can uh, post it on the site. Uh, if you want, um, we can talk about doing articles, reviews, if you want to submit content, um, looking for, yeah, just great information about what's going on in the city and um, how we can share it in the community and, uh, and give it some legs. So yeah, come talk to me and uh, if you've got some events going on, let me know and I'd be happy to share it. Thank you. Lovely. Anyone else got something they want to share today? New people? What are you guys doing these days? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I know. I keep on putting people on the spot. It's a very cruel thing. It's a bad habit. All right, well then, let's wrap it up here for today. Here's the flow. If you've got dishes in front of you, I would love it if you just walk those dishes on your way out just towards the kitchen. Just drop it on the counter. We'll take it from there. Um, in about five minutes, Stephanie right here, who is waving, is going to walk you down to the pub. First round's on us. Actually, with a crowd this size, probably second round's on us too. It's within the budget, whatever. Also snacks, also non-alcoholic beverages. We'll take care of you. We'll keep chatting. We'll talk about what you want to talk about. Um, so it's going to be down over at the at Darcy's, which is basically just like a block down there. But if you're not quite sure where to go, again, Stephanie will be up there at the top of the stairs. She'll yell and wave, and you'll follow her, and it'll work out really great. I'm going to hang out here for about, I don't know, 15 minutes just to put things away, and then I'll stumble up and catch up behind you. But otherwise, we'll see you all in January for my very favorite event of the year, which is basically a random sampler of, like, what do you need to know about what are like the nonprofit tech trends for 2019? So it'll be like about seven people doing 10 minute micro presentations. It's fast moving, it's super fun. You should totally be here um, and RSVP early because last year it was the one event that sold out. We had like 70 people, you know, people were hanging from the rafters. It was a good time. Otherwise, enjoy the holidays, have fun, don't work too hard. See ya. <laughs> <laughs>